Hey, welcome to Bifocal. Today is the first show that we are doing under the life segment of Bifocal. We have a topic today that I don't think could be a better topic to kick the show off. We're going to be talking about fitness. We're going to talk about nutrition. We're going to talk about dieting. We're going to talk about exercising. This is something that I think is going to have a little bit of something for everybody, so stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. As I mentioned, uh, this is part of our, uh, our life segment, and uh, I think this is probably the best show I could kick off this series with. And uh, we have a guest on today, and if you've been watching any of our shows, you might be familiar with him. But we have a guest on that's a, a fitness instructor, fitness coach. He's a bodybuilder. He's been in this uh, uh, environment, in this space for many years, and uh, he's going to share a lot of things that I think all of us are going to be able to relate to. So, hey, let me welcome Mark Kavinsky. Mark, welcome to the show. Great. Thank you, Dan. Glad Mark, to be here. Uh, you're the owner of Skull Fitness. Yes. I see you got it on, on your shirt. Yep. Skull Fitness. So how and why did you get into the fitness business and how'd that come about? goes back to really my early days. Um, uh, you know, we talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger and seeing the early magazines, you know, back in the 70s and early 80s with Arnold and Franco Colombo and Cohen Did Arnold, and do you think Arnold kind of really got the bodybuilding thing going? He was very instrumental because he was charismatic. Yeah. That's what did it. He started off in the 60s and, you know, with, with his early shows and he started winning the Olympia back in the 70s. His charisma did it. It put it on the map. You know, you go back to Steve Reeves and some of those old the old guys back in the day and stuff too. Good bodybuilders, but Arnold made it more it was a global icon. He took it from you know something small to more mainstream. And you know, this it was a language barrier. He tried to get into acting. Um, they had to dub him out for the first few movies he did, like one called Hercules in New York. They didn't use his voice at all. But when he got into, you know, Conan the Barbarian, and then started doing Terminator and Total Recall and all these other movies, he just became a phenomenon yeah but he put bodybuilding on the map he really put it on the map there too and a lot of us owe where we're at now because of where we started and then he had his encyclopedia of bodybuilding and i had that book and i read that thing from cover to cover when i was like 10 11 12 years old and i think i was like 12 or 13 i got my first weight set and because i read that book and because i used to watch a cartoon when i was younger called he-man and the masters of the universe oh yeah and i loved watching you know the characters he-man and skeletor and i'm like god how big and muscular they were and i was excited about that and i'd go in my basement i'd lift those weights and i'd have and i heard about oh yeah drink protein shakes to get bigger and i get the protein shakes and they are so bad and so chalky and i'm like oh try to get them down so but that's really what got me started was just looking at those physiques and seeing these men like look at the size of those muscles look how big they are were and you an athlete through high school i went yes i was you know i played baseball football played football in in, uh, in high school uh started to play a little college baseball but i was always very athletic so i enjoyed that you know sports competition i had that competitive blood nature in me so I always have had that so then when i started going to the gym and working out and start seeing some results a little bit. You know, wow, I can see that bicep a little bit. Oh, I see part of a chest muscle there. You know, when you're 17, 18, 19 years old, you know, you're working out with the football team. But then I kind of kept going with it. And I would train a lot more and more frequently. Never thought about ever, you know, doing anything more now, just staying in shape and kind of looking good. Initially, it was I wanted to look good, meet the girls, you know, you know, be the envy of the guys, of your friends, like, you know, that male alpha thing. And, you know, you go out your friends, but I just liked feeling good. I liked it. And I would read books. I'd read all the muscular development magazines back in the day. I and get you the, were into it. Yeah, I was into it a lot. And I would watch the videos and it was just a hobby. It was fun. I enjoyed it. At what point did the weightlifting and stuff then also start to morph into diet, nutrition, was that part of your, when you were in high school, was that part no, of it? that was, that was not was just part weight of it. Lifting. It was just lifting weights. Lift as heavy as you could. How much can you bench press? How much can you squat? That's all. That, and that's what that was now. important in high school, right. right? People ask me, what do you bench? And I'll tell people now, I have no idea. I don't know what I can bench because I rarely bench. Um, I can squat a lot. I can squat over 500 pounds. Um, I mean, I know what I can kind of bench, you know, but again, I don't bench much. But people ask. That's like yeah. your measure. It's That's not the goal. No, 
It's not at all. No, it's it's, it's not. But that's what we did here. You just lifted as much as you could, and then you just yeah. ate whatever. And you knew, well, maybe I should eat the donuts and all the Doritos. Maybe I should have some chicken and some steak once in a while. Yeah. But that was the extent of the diet. So would uh, would you consider yourself a nutrition expert? Um. I know a lot about nutrition. I can understand the macronutrients, micronutrients, how to set up the diet plans. I have learned trial and error myself. I've helped numerous people over the years. So um, am I a dietitian? No, I'm not a you know registered certified nutritionist dietitian, but I sure know enough. I understand um, how to calculate macros, like say the nutrients, how to put diet plans together, what foods work, what don't work for people. I, I, I'm pretty well versed with it. Now you've been uh, you've been in the weightlifting and the diet and the nutrition and the fitness for a long time. You're talking mm-hmm. back in high school, and you know you don't need to give your age today, but you're obviously not in your 20s, right? Nope. So you've been at this for years. Yep, yep. I, I'm I'm 49 right now. I'm I'm knocking on the door to 50 right now, and I actually am in better shape now than I was in my 20s and my 30s because I figured it out. I've learned through trial and error what works, what doesn't work. Mm-hmm. The myths, there's a lot of myths out there. The best way to learn is just you know, uh, time and experience yeah. has been my best teacher. Now, something some people probably, uh, maybe probably many of the, the viewers and the listeners today maybe don't know about you, mm-hmm. is you have actually competed in some bodybuilding contests. Yes. Uh, the last, since 2013, 14, uh, I had a goal. And it was to, you know what? One of these days, I just want on a bucket list. I'm going to get on stage and do this. And I was a lot heavier back then. Now, you said you're 49. So you said you did this in 2013. So you were 42 40s. years yeah. old. You So 42 years old, yep. you decide. I'm going to do this. Okay. I was almost 300 pounds. I was 297. And I saw a picture of myself once and uh, from a vacation, laying, on a, laying by the pool with a bathing suit on. And I that was what triggered it. Every, one thing to note, everybody has a trigger. That was my trigger. I saw that and I go, I don't want to look like this. No more. And I worked out a lot in my 20s and 30s. But once I had a family and kids, I worked out not as much. I was still yeah. lifting, you know, but for about seven or eight years there, my late 30s to early 40s, I lifted in the off season in the winter. In the summer, I didn't do much. I played a lot of softball. I was still doing competitive things, sports. I was traveling on national teams. But when I saw myself, I'm like, I, I, I'm going to change this. I go, I, I want to get on stage one day. And everybody had told me, like, that is so, so at far age away. age 42, you yep. say, I'm going to get on stage. I'm going to do this no matter what. Well, I was, uh, when I became aware of that, okay, um, I, I and I, I, I had heard, and you had shared with me over the years you were going to do it, but that's that's as far as my, my knowledge went. And so uh, in preparation for today, I went out to Google and I just typed in, Mark Kavinsky, bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. I thought, okay, well, let's let's see what's out there, and I actually came across some pretty uh, a lot of photos, and I thought, if you're open to it, I'd like to show some of them and let you walk me through a little bit of this. Sure, I'm I'm self conscious about it, but go right ahead. <laughs> so you you don't know what I'm what I'm about ready to show. No, here. no, and it's uh... Uh, okay. Well, I, I'll show a photo <laughs> to you there, and uh, so this is. Uh, this is obviously you posing. This is me. And one thing to know about me is I'm very self-conscious about taking my shirt off anywhere I go. And people ask you, like, why? I'm like, because I'm just, you know, I'm just self-conscious about it. But, yeah, this this is me. This is me in a show from uh, last was, year. Last year. So yeah. you were 48? 48. Yeah, this might have been a year or two years ago. Um, I've had more development in my legs since then. But, yeah, that's probably the last couple of years. Do you want to, like, right now take our shirts off and kind of see who can <laughs> how do you want to? I, I actually could. I'm actually, my face right now, if you'll notice, I'm a little more drawn out and gone. I have a competition coming up here soon. Season's coming up. I have a show coming, a couple shows for this year. And um, a lot of them have been canceled and postponed due to yeah what's going on in the world. But I... I've stayed with it for the last 17, 18 weeks. I'm like, I'm going to find some. I've been dieting down. I'm so committed. And I'm like, I'm going to find a show to do. And so, I found one. So right now, your body is how close to being able to do this again? It's right there. I'm, I'm a week and a half out. So I am I'm down to about 5%, just under 5% body fat right now. Um, next week, I go into my prep week when I start draining water a little bit more. and stuff. I go to my fine-tuning phase. But I'm there right now. If I had to step on a stage right now, I'd step on it's a stage. It's a pretty calculated process to get you to look like yes 
Yes. So you mentioned you were uh, laying uh, by a pool. You were 297 pounds. Yep. What do you weigh here in this picture? In this picture with me totally depleted and drained down, I'm probably around 224. Wow. Off season now, I'll get up to about 265, 270. Here, here's a question. And uh, I always, I guess I always wonder it and people always ask it. When you're not like ready for the show, if you walked around with no shirt on, you, you don't look like that. Year round, you can't. It's, it's, it's not healthy. Yeah. Right. This, this, this is a dieting. When you do competition dieting, your body can hold it for so many weeks, maybe a month or two, then that's it. Because it's not because you're so depleted and drained. I don't look like this year round. I don't want to look like this year round. Now you got, you, you have a smile on your face. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's part of the deal that you need to look like you're enjoying a bit. Is that hard to do? It's hard because when you're on stage and you're, again, you're going to have four or 500 people on stage looking at you and everyone, and you're in there in your little, you know, posing trunks and you have nine judges looking at all your flaws to critique you. People are trying to find what's wrong with you. Now, mentally, I say to myself, and I know this for a fact, 99.9% .9 of the people out there in the audience will never go on stage. So, but when I'm up there, there's a lot oh, of lights you don't you see. Got, so you got hundreds or thousands, whoever's in the audience. Usually a couple hundred, not thousands. Okay. Yet. <laughs> but you got people watching. A lot of people watching. Yep. And so you got hundreds of people watching. Mm -hmm. Most of those people are saying, man, I'd love to look at it like that. And then you got six judges who are trying to find something wrong with you. Right. They're trying to, they're trying to, and you'll go through your poses. There's poses that you do. So like you said here, to smile, it's hard to do sometimes because you're very depleted. You don't have any water you know, in you for 24 hours. So you're up there on stage and you got to make sure you're not cramping up and you're holding, you're squeezing the muscle. And it's, it's like conditioning. When you walk up the stage, you're sweating, you're hot, you're, but you're beat. But if you're showing that you'll notice when people will pose, if they're shaking on stage, they're, they're losing control. You have to not shake. You, you show like you're in control, you're smiling and you might be cramping up yeah. or you're just like, Oh, this hurts, but you don't show it. And when you're on stage, even when you're not posing, when you're off to the side, you have to be in what's called a relaxed pose, but it's anything but relaxed. You're still standing there flared out, holding it the entire time. You have to hold that pose. If you just drop down like this first second, come back up, a judge who's watching everybody else looks at you and they keep, they'll see you. If you, and that may take a point off of your total score if you're not in control, basically. Oh, so it's not just muscle. It's, it's how you're controlling yourself, it's, how you right. handle yourself. But it's how you're, when you're posing, there's certain ways to pose and posing itself is an art and a skill. It's taken me years to learn how to pose. It's not just, you know, doing your bicep pose and doing the most muscular. Yeah. There's different ways you're hitting angles to yeah. see muscles in different ways. Well, here, here's a, here's another different angle. Here. Yes. This, this is, is a my different side. angle. This is the side chest pose. And this is one here too, where it's taking me, you know, I can find flaws in this already now that I've changed from two years ago to now. Little ways you're dipping your shoulder, turning your waist. You want to show your best assets and you have to learn how to pose. So how, how long would you spend in front of a mirror practicing these poses? And it's not narcissistic. It's, it's, part, no, it's, of the part, of, it's part of the deal. It's every day for the last, for the, for the, probably six to eight weeks out from a show. It's probably 10 to 15 minutes a day posing. You, because you also have to get that muscle conditioned to pose. It's a different type of way you're contracting the muscles. It's not like when you're doing bicep curls or bench pressing. You're holding the muscles. And then what happens after you go through all your mandatory poses, the judges call them out. They're like, you know, we want to run through them again. because, And then they start moving you around on stage with other competitors. And we want to see you compared to this person, compared to that person. And they're like, okay, we want to see the poses again. And you are just tired. It's, you come off the stage. It's very, very what tiring. Are you, what are you doing backstage before you come out? When you're backstage, you're right there waiting. You have what in the very backstage you have called, called is like the pump room. So you have bands, you have mirrors, you're working on your posing, you're doing sit-ups, push-ups, you're getting yourself pumped up, ready to go. So you're trying to get some blood moving. and Yes. Then they take you the, back in the stage before you go on. And then sometimes if you're waiting for the group in front of you, you may lose that pump. And you're doing push-ups or whatever. So if 10, 15 minutes goes by, you're like, I need now, to get Now, you, you're doing this with other people that are going to walk on the stage with you. Correct. Is, right. that, is that intimidating? I mean, I know you're competing with one another, but are you, is it kind of uh, you're cheering one another on or is it? The camaraderie is great. Actually, we cheer each other on. It's is this not, kind of, a, is this kind of a, an individual thing too? It's like what? 
It is, but it's also there's a fraternity because all of us know what it took to look like this and to yeah. get on stage. We know the sacrifices we made, what it took to die, what it feels like. It's called suffering, what you went yeah. through. I know what those guys went through. They know what. I, so there's a mutual respect. You know, I had a I had a similar um, experience. Not not bodybuilding, obviously, but my daughter was a a, a track star mm-hmm. in high school. Yep, and um, she ran the the eight hundred, and she won. Okay, went to state, all that stuff, you know. There was one particular meet we went to, and uh, she won. And she finished, came up in the bleachers, was sitting with us. She had been with us for probably a couple minutes. There's still a girl running, the last girl. The last girl comes across minutes after my daughter did. The daughter comes up to her mom, is as excited as can be, and says, Mom, I PR'd. PR's personal record. Personal record. Mm -hmm. Didn't she knew she wasn't gonna win? It was an individual thing for her. It was a sense of accomplishment. She pushed herself beyond. Is this kind of like that? Yes. My very first show. Of course, you go in the mindset, I'm going there to win. Why go through all this to not win? But knowing that I'm not going to win. So my first show, I think I was in 13th place out of 16 guys. But you know what? I was so excited because I got up there. My family was there to cheer me on. And I did it. And there was this sense of relief after I did it. I'm like, and what I love about bodybuilding and going on stage is the competition. It's the focus and drive. I have a goal to get to by a certain date. That's when the show is. But when after I did that first show, I didn't win. But you know what? That was okay. I, I felt so good as accomplishment. And I'm like, I did it. I did this. And the first thing I said was, like, are you going to go eat? I'm like, yeah, I want to eat something. I was hungry. But then it's like, I can't wait till next year because I'm going to do this again. And I'm going to be better. And every year since then, I've moved up, moved up. I've, I've competed in probably about 15, 18 competitions now. And the last couple of years, my resume, I've taken first place at a lot of shows now. And I've been winning. And I've been moving up from more local to regional to national level. So what's the, what's the group that you compete in? Is it by age or what is it? There's two groups. One is the Masters, which is 40 and over. Regardless of weight? Correct. So you could compete with somebody who's 5'8", 160 pounds. Sure. So there's a Masters level. There's like usually a Masters 40 and over, Masters 15 and over, 16 and over. There's groups like that. Then there's what is called the bodybuilding, the open. That's by weight. So whether you're a... A bantam weight, a lightweight, a, a, a heavyweight, a super heavyweight. It depends what your weight class is. Then you're with gentlemen or people oh. that are, you know, I've competed against guys that have gotten pro cards, that are pros. I've stood, stood next to guys that have won pro. I'm not to that level in the open because these guys are 27, 28 years old. I'm pushing 50. I'm not going to be a big, huge monster. And I don't want, that's not my goal. But I've been with guys like that and they might be, I'm 6'2". I'll stand next to a guy who's 5'7", who weighs 220, 225 like I do, and he's just massive. They're just big because yeah. they're just shorter, more compact. You know, typically bodybuilders yeah. over six foot in history, you'll see it's very hard to put a lot of size on because that's a big frame. You know, you look at Lou Ferrigno, who's the Hulk, you know, big man, you know, he put, he put, yeah. a, you know, put that kind of size on as well. But typically most of your bodybuilders, your IFBB pros, your champions, 5'7", Five seven, five ten. They're kind of in that range there because it's just a shorter, more compact body. All right. So you're laying by the pool. You're 297 yep. pounds. All of a sudden, you walk home from work one day, and you walk in. Your kids are sitting there at the table, and you say, "Dad's, uh, Dad's going to be a bodybuilder." How's that received by the family? Not well. <laughs> Dad, come on. Dad, did you see yourself in that picture? I yeah. mean, come on, like. How did you lay it out? The I didn't at first. All I did was I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to start going to the gym and working out. And I'm going to clean up my diet. I started asking friends of mine that worked out a lot, that competed. And I just started piecemealing. I'm like, okay, doing more research and understanding. I'm going to start. And I knew more. I knew about diet already because I was already helping some people. But I'm like, I need to do this myself. So what I really got involved with was more of the science of it, understanding, asking more questions, understanding nutrients and how they work and how it goes together. And... I started reaching out to some very knowledgeable people um, high up in the industry that coach people as well and started picking their brains and started getting uh, using them as a knowledge so base. So started basically. getting knowledge. Great. And th- then started getting my own experience. So I started learning how to tweak. And I've learned in the last seven years here now, 
I know exactly what works for my body, what doesn't. And I can, when I start dieting down, when season comes in, you know, I, I've dropped, you know, 40, 45 pounds for this show. I know exactly how to manipulate my food, my diet, my cardio, everything to get to where I need. I, I understand what foods react what to my body. With that being said, I can apply that with other people and everybody else acts differently. Their bodies respond differently, but I understand now how all the nutrients flow and work together. What's optimal yeah. meal timing, frequency, amount in your meals. The diet is the most important thing of all. So of I think it's uh, we probably want to make sure people understand this new company you've started, Skull mm -hmm. Fitness. You're you're a personal trainer. That's yes. why you're, you're a coach. It's online coaching and personal training. So what I do is I take my 25, 30 years of experience and we'll apply that to help those that want to, you know, whether you're getting ready for you know, a, ready, a wedding, a photo shoot, you just want to look good for the summer or you know what, you had a moment like I did when I saw a picture of myself and I don't want to look like this anymore. I need some help. And it's becoming more and more prevalent to, for people going with, an, with, with a coach because you can't see it yourself. You're not sure what works and what doesn't work. And you're gonna, you don't want to waste five, seven, 10 years chasing around things and different diets and what works and what doesn't. You're going why, to go to coach as experience. Why, why don't diets work? I mean, there's a, there's a million of them yep. out there, right? I mean, I can, I can, everyone knows you got Atkins, you got South beach, you got the no, the no carb diet. Well, you have the keto diet, the Mediterranean diet. You have all, there's all kinds of diets out there. Go find one. Why don't, why don't they work? Everyone tries them. It's probably the number one thing people fail yes. at is a diet. It's diet. Why? First of all, they're going in it wrong. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. You're going to go into a diet. These will all work initially for everybody because the reason why they work initially. You're committed to it for a week. It's a shock to your system. You've changed up the way you're, all right, I'm changing my habits. I'm going to go to Jenny Craig or I'm going to use, you know, um, you know Weight Watchers or again, you know, Atkins diet. It's a whole shift in how you've probably been eating. So, right, those first few weeks or a month or two, people, I'm lost, lose 8, 10, 12 pounds. This is great. You're losing water weight when you lose that much. You've adjusted your diet. worked great. All of a sudden, you hit a wall. Well, this doesn't work anymore. What's happened? People quit, give up. I'm going to move to the next diet. What would be some of the walls people would hit? They'll just stop losing weight. The wall, the wall where I'm not losing weight anymore. Or I'm tired of the same food. Or that lack of the motivation. There's, there's a number of things. But the big thing is when people are very one-dimensional, they're going to look at that scale. The scale's not going down anymore. I'm eating what I'm supposed to be eating. But if, the, but you're not, if you're not constantly stimulating your body and your system, your body goes into a state of what is a homostasis. It just go, it goes to where it wants to be. This is where it's comfortable. It's going to hold in that position until you do something to shock it again. Okay, I'm going to challenge you. Mm -hmm. What did you call it? Homostasis? Home, homeostasis. Homeostasis. Homeostasis is, is the, where your body is in its l okay. level where it wants to be. I'm going to challenge you. If that's where my body is saying this is where I need to be, mm -hmm. then why not let it there? You could. You could leave it there if you're comfortable with that. But if you want to look, you know, you have a look you want to achieve, your, your homeostasis is going to constantly change. I'm better now. When I was at 297, sure, I was comfortable eating burgers and having a good time. I, my body was comfortable. I reinvented, I recompositioned my body. Now it's to a point like this is now the new normal. This is the new homeostasis for me now because now I'm comfortable with this. I like how I look. I like how I feel. I didn't really like how I felt before, physically and mentally. And that's the big part of it. People say, you know what? I'm okay being 50 pounds overweight. And that's not wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that at it's all. Be, it's being comfortable with comfortable where you are you and are. who you are. You got it. That's all that matters. You are comfortable. You're confident in yourself. That doesn't matter. Sometimes we be careful in the society. Very um, People are very judgmental with how somebody looks. Doesn't matter. It's how do you feel? If you are happy with yourself, you're happy with your life, who you are, where you're at, that's all that matters. But don't you think, well... I think everyone would agree with this. If you're overweight and you don't feel good, it isn't often because of our weight. I think it's because we're out of control. That bothers us. We've allowed a segment or a piece of our life out of control. Yes. It's happen happening to be demonstrated in our weight. Right. But it's it's really not the weight. It's... A lot of times it's emotional. People are going to eat because of emotion, whether they're depressed or just to pass some time, they're bored or just something to do. And they'll just have comfort into that and they feel good. 
They're going to sit on the couch, eat a half a gallon of ice cream and some chips and just watch TV. And I'm comfortable. I feel good. I'll start the diet tomorrow. I'm not going to do it now. There's a, but there's a, a lot of it is emotional eating. And don't then they you, feel guilty about it. Don't you think people, we talk about walls. Do you think some people, they hit the wall? I mean, I, I've done diets, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm off of them now. And I'll, I'll talk a little yeah. bit too about personal experience. But you're doing well for, like, as you said, two or three weeks. You've lost weight, okay? According to you, you've shocked your system. You've lost a lot of water weight. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, you just get this feeling, I'm going to have a cheat day, yes. right? And so you, whatever the cheat day is, or I'm going to have a cheat meal, mm-hmm. Here's what I have found that has happened. I have the cheat meal, and then it's like, well, I've already cheated, so I may as well go a little further. I've already, and then it 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 starts to snowball. Yes, that's it right there. But it is okay to have it, or is it okay to have a cheat day? No, not a cheat day. Not a cheat day. Okay. A cheat meal. A cheat meal. Yes. Okay. What I do is, when I, if I'm training and coaching somebody, you're working hard all week. And if I see results, you'll get rewarded for that. If there's no results, if you end up gaining two pounds that week, why the heck am I going to give you a cheat meal? You didn't earn it. Because you're looking for that. It's like, boy, that's, I, I, you know, I want to have a burger and fries on Saturday night or something. Okay, let's see how you're doing. But I call it a controlled cheat meal. You know, sometimes I'll allow people saying, you know what? For that meal, eat what you want. All right, here's a question. And I don't know the answer to this, but mm-hmm. I've often wondered. I'm dieting. Mm-hmm. I'm doing well. I'm type, talking hypothetically. Okay. I'm doing well. And I have a cheat meal. Yep. I actually go to five guys and I have the Get double all bacon. Bur- oh, absolutely. Right? Load it up. I do. Okay. And I got some fries and they're greasy and they love it. Okay. And then I got a Diet Coke. Right. Yeah. Let's I, get the Diet Coke in there. Sure. Yeah. I, I don't know why I do that. Okay. But regardless. How bad is that actually hurting my diet? It's actually benefiting you. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to make sure I, I, I hit this. Yep. All right, so I'm dieting. I've been gone. Things are well, and I'm just going to have a pig out meal. Mm-hmm. That's not hurting me. No. Okay, tell me why. Okay. Safe, safe for the week. You've been eating clean all week. What I mean by eating clean is you're not having refined sugars and processed foods, you're eating your fruits and vegetables, your and grains. that's a whole topic in right. itself, right? right? But you're eating what, you're, what you're, you need to be eating, good, healthy, quality food. Your body gets used to that. We go back to that homeostasis again. Your body gets used to it. All of a sudden, you shock the system. I want to back up. Homeostasis, is that what your body is used to, or is that just a natural landing place for the body? Can we, do we condition, like you said, you're gonna, you're, you've conditioned your body to right, a new. You're, you're gonna, to a new level, right. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to constantly be shifting your okay. body. Yes. So it's going to, it's a moving target. All more right. Or less. So you're on this diet, you're gone. You, right. You, but your body's used to eating these meals now all weeks, you know, five, six meals a day. You're eating this, eating this, eating this. And your body's like, okay, food's coming. I'm going to burn off, metabolize it. Wait for the next meal. Rinse, repeat, rinse, doing the same thing. All of a sudden now here comes a double cheeseburger and fries your metabolism kicks yeah, in. Yeah, what, hap- what happens? What then? happens is a thermogenic effect of it where you are now throwing your new food in there and your body reacts like, whoa, what's this? Tastes great. But your metabolism, as long as you are eating on a nice plan, your metabolism will kick in and burn it right off. You're not going to wake up the would next you, day. Would your metabolism kick in harder than normal? Yes. Because it's saying, whoa, it's, yep. it's a shock. Yes. It will. It's... It's required. You should have a cheat meal. I want people to have a cheat All meal. Right, I want to. I want to stay here a second, mm-hmm. okay? Because I. I think that's important. I think some people have a cheat day, and then mentally they get down. It's like, oh, why did I do that? No. But you're saying, hey, when if you've been dieting well, and all of a sudden you do that, you've shocked your body. Your body's like really gearing up yep. now. And that's a good thing. Yep. You're going to notice all of a sudden you have a meal like that. And about 20, 30 minutes later, you're sitting down. And you're like, well, I feel warm. Your body temperature has increased because it's burning off what you just ate. You've shocked it. Now, you go back to your normal meals again. Everything kind of settles but back why, in. But why is it good, though? 
because again, you're shocking your system. But why is that good? Because you want to keep your body guessing. You want to keep stimulating with what you're doing with your foods. You want to keep your foods very con consistency is the key to this whole thing. You're consistent Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, also on Saturday. Oh, I just threw a wrench at it. Now your body just woke up. Oh, I'm going to pay attention to what's going on here. I'm going to fix this real quick and then go back the way it was before. It, you are, you're, okay. it's, a good, it's good to do that because your body learns how to adapt to a quick change. Let me go the other way. Mm -hmm. I never have a cheat day. I only eat broccoli, asparagus, and chicken all the time. Yep. Is that good? No. No. For probably the opposite reasons. It's, of you're going to go into that, again, that homeostasis. You're going to just maintain where you're at. You're not going to change anymore. Your body will get to a point where I'm not losing weight, not gaining weight. I mean, the same amount of, you know, macronutrients every day. So I'm just going to pretty much stay. I'm not going to gain muscle. And I'm that's not gonna probably where people run into problems because yep. they can't maintain that anymore. Right. It depends what your goals are. And this is the first thing I'm going to ask somebody. What are your goals? All right. I come to you and I say, hey, Mark, I'm 59 years old. I need to lose some weight. I, I don't want to look like that. But I want to be fit and I want to be on a good diet. How, would you just prescribe one of these diets to me or how would you work? With no, me? I'm going to, I'm going to interview you first. Okay. I'm going to find out what have you tried in the past? What works for you? What hasn't worked? What are your favorite foods? What, like, because I want to know what, what keeps you going. I don't like the word diet because the diet is temporary. A diet is, and people will yo-yo diet. I'm going to try this diet. I'm going to try this diet. No, to make a diet work. It has to work for you. Yo-yo diet. I'm, I, wanna, I wanna get back to this topic, but mm -hmm. what happens when people go on diets all the time? Is there a negative effect to yeah. that? What typically happens, and I've seen this with people personally, is in the long run, they tend to gain more weight. Why is that though? Because they'll ship from one diet, they lose some weight, and then they start putting the weight back on, then they go another diet, they drop a little bit, then they go back up, but now they're a couple pounds heavier than they were before. Then you go to another diet, they drop maybe, Seven, eight, ten pounds, but they go up 12, 13. Why do you think it's they up and down after every diet? Why do you think they go up a little more? Because they get off that diet that they're on, or they start expanding it. Like you, you, you brought up a great point. Uh, it's a cheat day. Oh, I had that meal. You know what? It's not going to hurt to have a couple more cookies. You know that's enough. You know what? I'm going to have you know an extra little thing of ice cream. They start. They're on that diet, but they start stretching it, and like that's not making. Oh, I gained a pound. That's all right. I'll burn it off tomorrow. Oh, I gained two pounds. That's okay. I'll do some extra work. They'll say they're going to do it. They don't do it. So it starts creeping up on them again. Well, that diet didn't work. All right. Well, you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm heavier now than I was when I started three months ago. I got to find another diet. This isn't working. Okay. It's because you're not sticking with it. Yeah. Now, the, again, a problem with what we talk about with the Atkins, the, the keto, they're all good diets. And there's benefits to all of them. I know about each one of them. It's, but these are cookie cutter diets. It's not a one size fits all. Exactly. It's not one size fits all. Some people react very well on a, a diet when they're in ketosis. Others like, you know, a, a South Beach diet, you know, where they want to have, you know, some more fruits or vegetables. Well, or you stuff. said if you were to, if you were interviewing me, you're going to interview, you're going to ask me what type of foods. Why? Okay. So go like, what do you continue. like to eat? Like, cause I want to know what your, what your, what's your cheat meal? What's your go-to meal? Boy, I want a double cheeseburger. I want a lasagna. Mine, mine are cheap meals, plural. Okay. What are my cheat meals? Let's make sure we understand <laughs> right. that. I'll ask people, you know, do you like oatmeal? Do you like rice? Do you like sweet potatoes? You know, some people are like, I don't like fish. Okay, because when I'm going to design a, a meal plan for you, I'm going to take things out. If you're not going to eat it, why put you on a diet that you're going to dread? Because what's going to happen is in two to three weeks, you're going to jump off that diet and this whole thing's a failure. So I need to find out what foods you like, what right. foods you don't like. So what you're saying is these diets, they're, 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 they're cookie cutter diets, right? Yes. There's certain foods they're recommending. Mm -hmm. I may not like those foods, so the diet probably not long term for me. Correct. You're saying, Dan, I'm going to sit and talk to you. I want to understand you personally. I want to understand what types of foods you like and you don't like because you're going to build a diet around food that I like. Right. Now, I granted, want you I can't eat chocolate cake all the time. Sure, we'd love to, but I want you to be successful. In order to be successful. Yes, we have to make a change. You have to commit to what I'm telling you to do and dedicate. But I'm also not going to say, you know what? You're going to live on chicken and rice and broccoli for the next three months. I guarantee that diet's going to fail. What if I said, Mark, I got to lose 10 pounds by the end of the month? 
Well, then we're going to do a lot to restrict your calories to drop that out. Is that healthy? You're going to lose water. You might lose two pounds of fat. You're going to lose the rest in water. So I may be able so to do it for an event. Right. I got an event. I got a, I got a school. I got a 25-year high, high school reunion. I got a wedding I'm going to look good for. I need. I like at least three months with somebody minimum. But if they need to do something drastic, again, I'm into health and nutrition. I'm not into the shortcuts. So if you want to go on a diet plan for a month, to see how it works, fine. But if we're trying to get ready for an event, whether it's going to the beach, looking good for the summer, you know, make your friends jealous at a reunion, get on stage one day. We need time to because we have to yeah. adjust. And it's, it's I just need to movement. lose weight quickly. My best just to pick one of these diets and stick with it for thirty days. You you could if you really you could. That's what'll happen because you're throwing a shock to your system. Okay, this worked. I'm gonna go back to the way I was before. Yeah. But if you're committed and you really want to make a change in your life and really feel good, and that's the other thing too about food you eat, how do you feel? You know, do you, you know, I'll eat a double cheeseburger sometimes. Like God, why did I do that? That was a mistake. You know, yeah. then you regret. It, then you're feeling guilt. You know, but other times it's like you eat the foods. That but you, you know eat. what I find when that happens because I've done that a lot over mm -hmm. the years. Okay, you, we we've, all, have. we've all died, we all do. right? And then you eat something and you go, "Oh my gosh, I feel terrible." Yeah. But I also think that's good from the standpoint of it's a reminder. Yes, it is. That's exactly what it is. It's a reminder that that's not as good as what you right. thought. You don't feel as good. No. And the next time, here's one of my weaknesses. I love cookies. Oh my gosh, I love cookies. But if I want to go get an Oreo cookie. If I have a taste for one, I'll eat one. Is that your? Is that like your go-to cookie? Sometimes, like I, I got kids at the house, so we have so many cookies and stuff there. But if I have a taste, I'm disciplined enough. I'm gonna eat one cookie. I'm good, and I put it down. I put the rest down. I won't eat the whole sleeve, you know. In off season, I mean, I, I might eat five, six, seven, ten of them. Rarely, I just know my body. I, I'm very well disciplined. But if I really need a craving, I'm like, if I just basically, you know, quench that thirst and. <clears throat> for lack of better words, saying, you know, I just want to taste. That's it. My taste buds yeah. are good. I'm fine. I, I, it's a discipline. So I, I guess I want to maybe sum some of this up because I think you hit on some things that are pretty important on the diet side. One, you said diet's a way of life. Yes. Diet, is, diet has a very negative connotation to it. We've given that in society over the years. People are so, your diet, your diet... It's restricting. It's too restrictive. It's too restrictive. Th that's why I ask. I want to find out what food you like. Do you like fruits and vegetables? And what do you like to eat? What makes you, you know, and if you might not even know, I don't know. Well, then we're going to try things. So that's that's really a huge value that Skull Fitness is bringing to yep. um, an individual. Yep. Is it's customized. It's customized. And that, and, and I guess this is a big point. If you're interested in changing changing your way of life yes i'm not interested in losing 10 pounds i'm interested in losing 15 and keeping 15 off and being fit right that's who i'm looking for that's i want someone that's going to commit and can be dedicated and if they need a little help along the way that that's where the coaching comes in that's i want the people that are committed i'm not looking for someone that's yeah i just need to lose 10 pounds in and out that's great you know what you can do that on your own All google right. it up person comes to you mark i just got a slow metabolism Mm -hmm. Can you change a metabolism? Yes. You can change a metabolism. So yes. That, so, okay, you got a slow metabolism. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's work. We're going to speed up your metabolism. How, how do you do that? Feed you. I'm in. I'm going to feed you. I'm in. Yep. People like, I go, you have to eat to lose weight. And people do not understand that concept. And here's why. A lot of people I talk to, they're so busy, they eat once, twice a day. There's why you have slow metabolism. But they that one big meal. Your body's smart. Your body is a beautiful, wonderful machine. It knows that I'm going to be fed once or twice a day. Therefore, I'm going to slow down my metabolism and let it just right because I'm not going to eat for another eight the to 10 hours. body's intelligent. Very intelligent. It adapts quickly. Every two weeks, your body, you got to shock it. Now, if I tell the body, I'm going to feed you five, six times a day, people are like, whoa, 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 I'm going to get fat. No, you're not. Because I've got certain size meals that are portioned out every two, three hours. You're going to be like eating. what types of food would you would you eat in like that type of well? Regimen? It's going to be a mixture. We're going to have between your proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates. Okay, so it's pretty structured. Pretty structured. So your proteins, whether it's meat, chicken, fish, you know, lean ground beef, turkey, eggs, you know, things like that. Or we're always having a protein source every meal. We go to your carbs. Are we looking? You know, and again, healthier carbs depends where there's like a glycemic index on what you know, potatoes, oatmeal, you know. Um, you know, oats and you know, fiber, things like that, that will have, you know, for your carbohydrates. 
and then you get your fats and people are afraid of fats. They're like, oh, I don't want to eat fat. Fat means I'm going to get fat. No, you need essential fats, essential fatty acids in your system because that's what makes everything go around. That was the last part that I had to finally figure out was the part with the fats. You've got to throw the right ratio of fats into your food and you balance your meals out. And now I'm eating more frequently. Now I'm getting to three, four or five times a day. Now people will ask me, I don't have time to eat five times a day. You have 30 seconds to drink a shake. You sure could. You can have a, you can throw a quick meal replacement in, you know, if you're driving somewhere, you don't tell me you don't have 30 seconds. How do you seconds. feel about the, 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 the shakes and the, the replacements and that kind of stuff? Most of the shakes out there, it's just a marketing tool. You have to look at the quality of the ingredients. And once you learn how to read labels, and I'm expecting you, I'll, I know which ones are good. Once you learn what's out there, then you're going to spend a little bit more on a quality. It's basically, you have to spend a little more on your quality of food. Do I want a good quality meat? I want the, just the cheap stuff that's left over. And that's, well, that your body's going to respond to the cheap stuff. You know, it's like, okay, fine. But it's going to respond to a better quality of food. You know, better turkey, maybe it's, if it's grass-fed, you know, if, you know, are there hormones in there? Depending on what, you know, what you, you're investing in yourself, okay? So you give yourself high quality food, just like if you get like a, a, a protein shake, for example, if it's a higher quality of a whey protein and there's different combinations, there's different ingredients. Some of these use a lot of fillers in them. You're like, oh, I'm taking a protein shake. I'm good. Yeah, but that's the, the protein you're taking is not a very good, pro- you're gonna, if you're lactose intolerant, you're going to, your stomach doesn't feel good. It's like, oh, that, that, it's a bad quality. You want something that you feel satiated, that you're going to feel full. And, you know, you're not going to live on shakes all day, but if every once in a while you got to get a shake in there just to get a meal, you, you go right ahead. I do it with people all the time, just a quick meal they have, you know, whether it's a shake and an apple or a banana or something, that's a meal. We, I've got something set for you. But going back to the original question, how do I speed up my metabolism? I'm going to feed you, feed you more. And that's going to speed up your metabolism because now your body is, wait a second, I'm going to eat again in three hours. I got to burn this off. I mean, your, the body's actually that intelligent. Yep. You have to give it a it's good four to six weeks. It's first two weeks, it's okay. going to be like, yeah, I'm not sure. But all of a sudden, it kicks in. It learns. Would it's somebody learn. gain weight in that first two or three weeks? No. No. Because, because they're eating different foods. Well, because it's, I don't like to count calories. I think it's a very ambiguous term. I count macros. I want to know what your protein, fat, and carbs per meal are. Calories, there's a debate all the time about this. Misleading. It's very misleading. 2,000 calories of Oreo cookies is not the same as 2,000 calories of rice and chicken. Oh, it's calories in, calories out. No, it's not. It's the quality of the calorie. You know, so if I want, you know, I have some chips and some cookies and a burger and I'm getting 3,000 calories of all that stuff, you know, a nice sloppy bacon burger. Sure, it's 3,000 calories. But I've got 3,000 calories the other way. It's much better. Your body becomes more efficient. So you're eating quality foods that your body can burn off, that it can utilize those nutrients for the rest of your body. You can't build, you can't strengthen muscle, get lean muscle eating garbage food. You're going to, you're going to become what you eat. You are what you eat. You know the saying. So if you're having good quality food, meal timing at certain times of the day, and there's certain times to eat, you know, that are better than others. If you, depends if you're working out or not working out. You know, there's myths about do I eat carbs at night? And so there's all kinds of stuff, but you, your meal frequency. So we're going to put you on a diet that it's going to be, you're going to be eating caloric wise less than what you've been eating because we want you to lose weight, but you're going to eat more frequently. So you're not going to feel so hungry and your body will, after about a week or two, you'll have the hunger pains. You'll adjust to it. Your body will, you have to give it time to adjust. Very interesting. Um, listening to you talk because, um, you know, I've been in business all my life, right? Own my own business, owned a couple businesses. And in business, you have a goal, you have a strategy, you have some objectives for your business. And then as a result of that, you start marketing your business accordingly. Mm -hmm. You start doing the things you need to do to move your business down the path you want to go. Listening to you, it's very similar. Your body's a business. Yep. You just said it has intelligence to it, right? And it adjusts. And if my goal for my body, if my goal for my life, if the objective for my lifestyle is I want to feel good, I'm, I'm being hypothetical, but I want to feel good. Um, I want my clothes to fit. I want to be able to go into the store and just be able to get something off the rack. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I uh, I want to I want to I want to be active. I want to be able to move. Then you have to do things accordingly, and you can't just take something off the shelf. It's not you know it's kind of like software. This software might not work for you, but it works for them. That's the value I see you bringing to to an individual. You're kind of that marketing arm. You're yeah. saying let's put a plan that fits you, yep. because I think the opposite of that is if they don't take the time to work with somebody like you, they could be going through a lot more time, effort, yes. and lack of results. And I did that myself too for years. So you're you're proof of that. I'm proof of it as well too. I've done the same thing. I thought I could do this myself. So go hook up with somebody yep. who knows how to, and that's what you did. You you said you know 20 minutes ago, I went out and sought advice. Yep. I went to the top of the food chain. I've been to seminars. I've gone to training. I've traveled around the country. I've met a lot of people. I've, I know a lot of people in the industry that are very, very credible. I've learned from them for years. So I now have that information that I am now downloading and providing to other people. Yep. So and what I've learned, again, is it's individualism. It's customized. Everyone's different. I think that's different. the key you're hitting on. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting from right. this is, hey, th- these diets are on the shelf. Okay. You want to lose 30 pounds for your class reunion? Go get one and do it for 30 days. But if you're looking for a way of life, then we got a custom. I, I really liked what you said. I want to interview you and I want to see what kind of foods you like because I got to put a plan together that your lifestyle is going to stick. With. I need to know, do you have medical issues and conditions? You know what? I got heart arrhythmia. I've got, I got food allergies. I can't have nuts. I, I need, I'm gluten intolerant. I need to know those things. I need to build the, build that profile up of you. So I go through a questionnaire. I need to know that about you. Tell me, tell me about your workout history. I used to work all the time when I was younger in high school. I was this and that. I was an athlete. Okay. And you got some genetics. I'm not a doctor, you know, purely what I'm giving is advice based on experience, you know, so don't come after me saying that didn't work. But again, with a coach, someone who pays attention to you is going to make you know, once we get you on a plan, expect there to be adjustments. There has to be adjustments because we got to find out what's working for you, what's not working for you. We all of a sudden, three weeks went into it. It's like, hey, Mark, you know, this is happening. I'm not feeling well. Okay, you know, we got to change it. What did we change? What did you do? And I need people to tell me. You have to be honest with me. What did you do differently? Did you eat something differently? What I find a lot is people don't tell me everything. Well, I threw ketchup on that. A lot of ketchup. I added more condiments. Those are that extra 50, 100 calories here and there. Well, you just added 500 calories to your diet today because I need to know everything that's going in your mouth. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. You know, are you eating 50 packs of Splenda every day that I don't know? Like, oh, I'm just putting Splenda on my stuff. I need to know that because if all of a sudden I'm trying to solve a puzzle here and you're not giving me all the information, yeah, I can't fix this. And then you're going to be like, well, Mark, you didn't fix this for me. You didn't give me everything I needed to know. I need to know what happened. So once you're honest with me, hey, you know what, Mark, I had a bad day today and I, I ate something else. Okay. You know what? It's okay. We're going to get you back on track. A coach is going to be there for you to say that's okay. I want to be in the back of your head, just knowing that I'm going to. We're going to it's take an care account, of this. It's an accountability partner. People, when they have a coach, all of a sudden now they're like, it's not so easy having that second or third cheat meal in a day. As you said, a cheat day earlier. Uh, you know what? Maybe I would put that down because I got to do a weigh in tomorrow, and if Mark sees my the, the weigh in, I'm like, oh crap. Then I'm going to be uh, yeah. maybe I shouldn't do that. I'm going to know. Yeah. You know, so again, when I talk about customizable, as your body adjusts, we got to readjust it again to get to where you want to be. And then it's, we maintain that. I work with a lot of women too, a lot of females, biggest ones, because I want to put that new bathing suit on. I want to look like I did when I was 25, you know, and you can do that. You can darn do that. There's my favorite saying, which I'd love to say, and I've lived by this. Who says you can't? Someone tells me you can't do that. Why? Who said that? And what, what else motivated me on stage one day was I heard someone at a gym talking about me and said, he won't do it. He'll never make it. He'll never make it on stage. And, I, and that resonated with me. And I'm like, you know what? I am going to get on stage. I'm going to do it. I'm going to prove to everybody I can do it. Prove to myself. Prove to everybody I can do this. And people I hadn't seen for a couple of years looked at me. And they're like, oh, my gosh, what happened to you? Like the transformation. And I said, I just changed my lifestyle and I'm so much happier. I feel, and I feel 10 times better than now than I did 10, 15, 20 years ago, easily. And if I can add more years to my life, 
I get with my kids and my grandkids, you know, God willing in that too. And I get to spend more time. My quality of life is better now. Absolutely. This is worth this. And this is going to quality of life. So if I can be the slightest bit of an influence on somebody to make your life a little bit better, a little more positive, you wake up in the morning, a little jump kick in your step. And if I had anything to do with that, that's worth it to me. I've made, I made a difference for somebody. There's many people that I've made differences for. And every time I hear that story, it is the most humbling thing I ever hear because I like to know that I've changed somebody's life for the positive. I've given yeah. you more time with your family. I've made you feel good about yourself, you know, mentally, physically, whatever it might be. So yeah. that that's the reward there too. I think also, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're going to diet, whether you're going to do one of these canned diets off the shelf mm-hmm. or whether you're going to get a personal trainer, it's really, it's not harder to have a personal trainer. It's just a different, more customized approach right if you really want to make a difference you really want to change your life that you've set and i mentioned the word trigger that's it i've had enough i'm ready to make a commitment what are some triggers you've seen from people everyone has a different trigger the biggest one is when they look at themselves in the mirror one day and they just look and they're like i can't do this anymore i don't look like this anymore that's the biggest one there could be a death in the family someone who's had diabetes someone who's overweight they've lost a loved one and they're like i don't want to be like that now they're a little nervous i'm nervous now They had a visit with a doctor. The doctor scared them. You know what? You're getting blockage in your heart. You're out of weight. Your cholesterol's high. You're considered obese. That was a wake-up call. Someone who's been smoking half their life drinks a lot. And again, the doctor tells them, you got 10 years if you don't knock this off. There's got to be a trigger. And there's many, many, everybody's different. There's a thousand different triggers out there. And everyone has a different story. But we have to find out what your trigger is. And sometimes you don't know what you think you know what it is. Oh, yeah, I put this bathing suit on. I look like I look like garbage. And two weeks later, I put my clothes on. I'm fine again. Now, it's got to be something that really resonates. And I'll tell people sometimes, what everyone's different. Take a picture of yourself. And take that picture and stick it up on your mirror in your bathroom. Only you see it. If it bothers you that much, I want you to look at that picture. Because then if you go through coaching with somebody and you start seeing results, you're going to see the old you and you have that visual reminder from where you came from. And then you're going to see where you are now. And that's, there's motivation. There's different ways of going about it, but that's part of my interview process is I want to find out about you. What does trigger you? What, what gets you excited? What motivates you? You know, are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it for somebody else? So to make sure I understand. So you go through the interviewing process, you're actually going to come back with a diet plan Yep. So you're going to put together the diet plan. Yes. Once I go through the questionnaire with you, um, you know, typically I'll email a questionnaire. I want to know all this about you. And there's some questions I'm not sure about. I'll contact. We'll actually have a con, uh, you know, actual contact with you if I'm not sure about something. Because I want to make sure I'm 100% clear. I want to know, define what your goal is. What is your goal? Why do you want to, why do, why do you want to lose weight? Or why do you want to get in shape? Why do you want to gain weight? Some people want to you know, may want to go onto a stage one day or never going to stay. They just want to put some lean muscle on. It's not always losing weight. They might want to gain and tone up and look a little better. I want to know what, the, what, what, what is it? What is your goal? Okay. From that, now I need to understand a little bit more about you personally, you know, you know, your environment, you know, do you, you're going to work out at home? Or are you going to go to a gym? Some people are intimidated by going to the gym. Okay. We'll, we'll take care of that part of it at home. There's ways around it, but then I'm going to customize a diet plan based on your your height, your weight, there's metabolic, there's numbers, there's formulas I'll put together. Sounds cookie cutter at first, but we start, it's a starting point. And then as of two weeks, as a month, two, three months goes by, you're sticking with me, now we're going to adjust that. Now we're going to start shifting around. And you'll find your diet from what it was from day one to this six months later may have vastly changed. Would would somebody come to you and say, hey, I want to lose X amount of weight by this time, mm-hmm. somebody else could come to you and say, I'm not really interested in losing so much per week or so much per month. I want to lose weight, but I just want to lose it in a healthy manner and I want it to stay off. So a particular goal may not be as important. Could you have both of that? Yes, I like that one because I'm looking for, I, I, I tend to bring on the clients that are dedicated and committed. I want to be like this and I want to stay like, I want to stay a certain way and I want to maintain so whether this I lose five pounds a month or three pounds a month. Right. But I want to, I want to stick with a plan. I want something that works for me. So that's where we look for the long term. It's like, you know what? 
join as on part board. of your interviewing process. Yes. Okay. I want to know about you. I want to know what you're looking. That's why I want to know your goal. You know what? My goal is just to look good for the summer. And then in the winter, I'll fatten up again. And then next summer, we'll go through it again. Okay. If that's what you want to do, we'll do that. If you're looking for a long-term healthy lifestyle all year round, you want to feel good, you know, not only physically, but mentally, and you want to feel good, then let's, yeah. let's adjust for that. I think maybe one of the other values you can bring into an individual too is challenging their goals. Right. And it depends on the personality. Yeah. I've, I used to be a football coach for eight, nine years. So I used to coach, you know, Pee Wee, little kids as well too. And even the older ones, everyone is different. There are some of those kids I get right in front of your face and say, what are you doing? You better get out there. Others are, okay, let's take a step back. Let's think about this. What, what could we have done better? What, how could we have resolved that differently? Because people with conflict and resolution handle things differently. So I needed to get into your psyche a little bit too. I need to know what, again, triggers again. I need to know what's working for you. I need to understand you a little bit more. And this is, this is higher level coaching now. This is more than what you're going to get. You hire an online coach and they're just going to send you a, here's your diet plan. You know, send me a photo once a week and we'll let you know where you're at. I'm a little more customized. I want to really get to know about you. I'm developing that relationship because, because I, I that's an accountability partner. It is. So, Right. So if somebody, you know, there's people that really need, you know what, they need the aggressive in your face. Go, 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 go. Come on. Come on. That's not enough. You can do better. You want to be better. interactive. Right. Others will like, no, I don't, I don't want to coach in my face. I just want to say, hey, I just need to be, I need some guidance. So am I going to be in, in you more? I, accountability. Why did you miss your session today? You didn't do your cardio. What happened? Is everything okay? Is the, people will come up with 101,000 excuses. Well, I was late to work. Well, the kids did this. Well, I did. I understand life gets in the way, but this is about you. You need to make time for yourself. There's too many people that, and it's not as a bad thing, they make time for everybody else. There's moms that are busy, they got three, two, three, four kids. They got a household, they got a job, they're trying to keep the house. I don't have time to work out. Yes, you do. You do. Whether you got to get up a little earlier each day, or you tell that your husband or your spouse or someone or your partner, I need you know 45 minutes to myself every day because this is for me. Yeah. Mental well-being, taking care of yourself, it's important. Yep. You gave us a lot to think about. I mean, I, I think if, if I'm listening, and, you know, I, I, I like to be as fit as anybody else, right? I, I like to diet, but I don't like, I mean, I like to eat, too. I'll do. I think you gave me a lot of things to think about. You know, one was uh, it's a way of life. And I think people say that a lot when they're on a diet. You know, here's one for you. People get on a diet, and in two weeks, they think they've mastered the world. This diet's this is the I'm gonna yeah I can do this for hear it all the time right post and, on Facebook social media this is it this right, did it right <laughs> all the time and we know there's a million diets because people don't stick to them right I think the way of life is something people have to comprehend that's the only way it's going to be real and I think you you touched on that heavily I think I got I gathered that from it. I think another thing you hit on that was pretty important for me was if I'm going to go on a diet, I want to lose weight. Why not talk to somebody who's going to customize that to me rather than pull something off the shelf at Kroger's? Right. Right. I think that's important. And I think the why it's important, because you hit on a couple things that I think were very important. You want to spend time with me. And you want to talk about the food groups that I like and my lifestyle because you want to tailor a, a nutrition plan around food groups that I'm going to stick with. Yeah. I think that's important because if it's going to be a way of life, I have to be able to, sus to sustain it. That's the point is to sustain this. I'm not looking for a 30-day fix, okay? Yeah. This is not a marketing gimmick. It's a way of life. So you could say, Mark, I really love fruits or yeah. vegetables or then we're going to have something built in with that. Oh, I think that's key. You know, we need to know what, again, what's going to work for you. Ab absolutely. And I think the thing you spent some time on, and I'm glad you did, maybe just from a personal uh, understanding of my own, was cheat. I said cheat day. You quickly said cheat, cheat meal. meal. Okay. But, but that's important, right? <laughs> sure. It's a difference between a cheat meal yes, it is. and a cheat day. Yes. But you said, no, that's actually good for the body. Yes. And you explained it. And I think, you know, part of the reason we fall off our diets is because we hit a wall and we beat ourselves up. I had a cheat meal and I may as well snack tonight then because I, 
Now you're getting to the emotional part of all this. Yeah. Yes. So here's what I'd like to do. You you brought so much more to the table than I was planning today. You know, I think I kicked the show off and saying, hey, we're going to talk about diets. We're going to talk about exercise and mental well-being. And we just didn't get to it. But I, I have to believe if you're going to prescribe a good nutrition plan to somebody, you're going to encompass some exercise into that. Yes. Right. Yeah, because they're going to go hand in hand. They're going to go. And that's, so that's important. Right. So whether that's going to involve some weight training, some cardio, some activity, going for walks, you know, just doing some kind of yoga, Pilates, whatever that event may be. Yeah. We need it to, we'll touch upon that because this, it all, to me, it's a three, uh, a three headed or three, a triad of, of, of three components because there is the diet, there is the, the physical part of the training, and then there's the mental which is the they're, emotional and health. They're That's a all big important. Part. It's important, but one thing I've noticed in, in my travels, in my experience in studying cultures and around the world and diets and all this other stuff, one thing I noticed that does, it rarely is touched upon is the mental side of this, the mental aspect and the emotional health. We're talking about, okay, well, here's a diet and here's your workout plan. You've hit two. I'm here to hit the third. I want to know how you're feeling, why you're feeling that way, what's causing this. I think it's important to point out, this isn't your full-time job. Right. This that, is my, no, that this, picture we showed. Right. This is what I did on the side. You did that on the side. Right. I have my own other business that I run full-time that I've had for 15 years. You're a, bi you're a business owner of yes, a business. Yes, I'm a business owner. This is my hobby. This is what I do on the side. And for me to commit to myself, I don't miss a workout. I don't miss cardio, especially when I'm in competition season. You know, I'm so disciplined where I don't miss a meal. I eat exactly what I'm supposed to eat. You know, off season, I have a little more leeway. Your body's the way it looks now because of what you're eating and your activity level. That's the way it looks. That's why it looks the way it does now. People may think, well, I'm more active than what. No, your body is the way it is now because of what you're doing to it. You want to better it. You want to strengthen it. However you want to do, we have to go above and beyond what you're doing now. Very good. So are you willing to come back? I'm willing to come back. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, I, uh, I've had a lot of interest on this show. I mean, or a lot of interest on this topic. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think you covered a lot of ground. And I think people would also like to hear about the, the fitness side of this, the exercise, the weightlifting, the walking, the running, whatever that is. Okay. And I think they're going to want to hear about that. So we'll schedule to get you back soon. I would like to get you back soon. So if you're willing to do that, we'll do that. I'm willing to do that. We can move on to the next topic because I got, again, plenty to talk about. And I have a lot of information to share. People want to reach out to you. How do they reach? How do they reach Mark? How do they reach Skull Fitness? The best way to read through Skull Fitness is you can email me at mark at skullfitness.pro. Um, that's the best way you want to get a hold of me directly. I also have a website, skullfitness.pro. Got some basic information about coaching, what I do, you know, what's available. If you're interested in kind of learning more about, you know, what's, what's out there for you, any kind of packages, like you want diet and nutrition, the whole thing, visit my website and contact me directly. And if you're interested just as a, as a introductory, just to find out some information, what it's about, just contact me directly. I'll be more than happy to spend some time with you and we can see if there's a fit, like, you know, I want to know your goals, what you want to do. And if you'd like to work with me, if I can, if I'd love to help you out, just reach out and we can do that. Real quick, Skull Fitness. How'd you come up with the name? I have this thing with skulls or so. I love this. You know, I, I don't know why there's no reason to it. I just, um, it, it, there's really no, I just like the, the symbol of it as well too. Nothing derogatory or bad yeah. or stuff, but you know, it was just a little, something I always liked, you know, when I was at other gyms or, you know, I see other logos and stuff too. And, um, when I had, I went through a customized <clears> design <throat> process to go to come up with this idea and, uh, quite a few designers and like several hundred versions until I came up with the, ver what I have now. And I had the designer, um, when we, we came up with this with the skull and the barbell, but when he put the, it originally was just a male that was in here, just a man doing a, a, a biflex, a, a flexing pose. I go, but I also can cater in tor towards women. I work with women as well, too, with females. I go, we got to do something about that. So he came up with and threw the male and the female in here. And I go, that's it right there. I go, because now it shows that I don't work with just, just not a male industry. It's female. It's more female dominated than male. Believe it or not, there's many, it's almost like a 60 40 split. There's more women into the health and fitness, I think, than the males. From what I see from the gyms, what I see at the competitions, the shows, online questionnaires, you know, Q and A's, I see a lot more of that. So I want to make sure this encompasses that. I can help 
any age from teenagers up to people in their 80s and 90s, but also on both sides of the coin because men and women physiology, the physiologically are different as well too. What I have a plan I give to a male, exercise wise, nutritional wise, is not the same I'd give to a female. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Women react differently. Differences between testosterone and estrogen and how the body reacts. And if you have women that are going through premenopause or menopause, their body's shifting and changing. We have to adjust to that. There are men that, you know, their early 20s, late teens, early 20s, testosterone's running rampant. As you get older, 30s and 40s, your testosterone drops down. Things change your body. So we have to have a diet accordingly that's going to fit and process that for you. Your diet from a 50-year-old is different than a diet from a 20-year-old. So it's a lot of customization as well, yeah. too. There's Once again, to why it. it's not a one diet fits all. Right. Right. Well, hey, thank you for coming in. I, I personally have enjoyed this. I'm sure the listeners have as well. We will get you back soon. We'll talk about exercise. We'll talk about the mental well-being of this, and uh, we'll keep this We'll keep this topic. Sounds going. great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, thanks for listening in. Uh, this was a great show. Uh, I, I got personally a lot out of this show. I'm, I'm hoping you did too. If you want to hear more like this, stay tuned. Hit subscribe. We will have Mark back again. Um, if you like shows like this, let me know if you have other topics, particular uh, subject matters. Reach out to me. Send me an email, dharsh at danharsh.com. I'll make sure we get those subject matters on the show. But hey, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we look forward to having you back. <laughs>